And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. The scriptures inform us a time would come when the beast would have complete power in the physical realm. The beast will enforce all people to worship his image. Those who refuse to worship the image of the beast would be killed. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Everyone should know the image of the beast is the Jewish Messiah that has been circulating for many generations. The men of sin will have complete control of the beast system. It does not matter your class or your nation's population. The men of sin, the Jewish Messiah, will cause the people to receive the mark of the beast. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Israelites, as you can see, with the kingdom of darkness, it does not matter your bloodline or how loyal you are to Satan. The kingdom of darkness has no loyalty to anyone, not even for the workers of iniquity and power that are responsible for the suffering of the people all over the world. The workers of iniquity who enforce Satan's will believe they have immunity. They are truly blinded by the ways of this world in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan can bless you in the beast system to become rich, also to obtain fame and power. When the time comes to enforce his will, regardless if you serve him or not, he will destroy you to accomplish his will. The scripture said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? But what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The kingdom of darkness blesses a person to gain access to the physical realm to accomplish their will. Satan does not give you your flesh desires to become your friend nor your protector. Regardless if you serve Satan or not, the kingdom of darkness has no problem sacrificing a person. It is foolish to believe Satan would be loyal to a person without betrayal. We have seen on multiple occasions how Satan uplift a person, then turn around and destroy them. Look at the lives of many celebrities. Many so-called celebrities will do anything for fame. Once they receive fame, they become bondmen and bondwomen to Satan. They have no control over their lives. The moment they rebel, they lose their wealth and killed. Israelites' material possession and wealth in the physical realm is not worth spending eternity in anguish. Everything under the sun is temporary. What awaits you in eternity is more valuable. The scriptures reveal to store your treasures in heaven where thieves cannot get to it. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. The way to store your treasures in heaven is through good works in the physical realm, adhering to the statutes and commandments of the Most High, repenting and submitting to the Most High's will for your life. You are building spiritual wealth when you obey the Most High. You gain access to the fruits of your labor in eternity. The scriptures reveal the wealth of the wicked are stored for the righteous. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The people who trade their glory for the lesser cannot look beyond their flesh. There is nothing the kingdom of darkness could offer you that is worth trading eternal life with the Most High for pain and suffering in the lake of fire.
Remember, everything you obtain in the physical realm is temporary. Eternity is forever. The story of the rich man in the scriptures should be a testimony to all Israelites and strangers who seek to be rich and obtain power in the physical realm. The scripture said it is hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Laboring to accumulate massive wealth and power in the physical realm is laboring in vain. Once you die, you leave it behind. Once the wicked cross over to eternity, they have nothing waiting for them because they wasted their time accumulating material possessions that do not serve them in eternity. The reason it is important for me to help you understand you are wasting time laboring for material junk, you cannot cross over with any material possessions. Israelites, it is important not to let the kingdom of darkness via the beast system intimidate you to turn your back on the Most High. You have come too far to allow yourself to give up on the Most High. Do not allow the power given to the beast determine the Most High sovereignty in your life. It is the Most High who appoint kings and Yah could dethrone them as well. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. The Most High has complete control of His creation. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness cause you to lose what you have been laboring to obtain in eternity at the last second. We have entered a new era. You must choose to stand with the Most High or die. The kingdom of darkness is chipping away at your freedom every day. Satan will see to it that he takes away everything you depend on to disable you. The workers of iniquity are hoping you will submit to their will once they strip everything from you. For example, the beast system disabled many from utilizing the natural farming skills the Most High gave to his people to survive. Many people depend on grocery stores to get their food. Presently, the kingdom of darkness has taken away our freedom to get groceries. If you do not obey the face mask recommendations, you cannot enter a store to purchase your groceries. I must use the word recommendation because the CDC, a satanic agency, recommend for you to wear a mask. Yet, if you do not wear a mask, you cannot enter a store. They enforce their recommendations as if it is the law. Israelites, this is the way Satan chip away at your freedom until the beast system take away everything essential to cause you to submit to their will. Right now, it is the face mask. Next, if you do not take the vaccine, more restrictions will be added to your life. The kingdom of darkness is not going to give you an option to take the vaccine. They will make it appear as if you have the option to do so. However, if you do not, the kingdom of darkness will slowly chip away at your free will until you can no longer operate. It is important for you to understand how the scriptures are being fulfilled. All scriptures must be fulfilled. These be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Israelites, if the prophecies are not fulfilled, we cannot move forward to Jacob's reign. Many Israelites and strangers question why do the Most High allow evil to happen. All scriptures must be fulfilled for us to elevate. If the mark of the beast does not take place, how are we to move closer to redemption? Remember, the Most High has multiple reasons for a trial. You must make the decision to serve the Most High. How you prepare and handle prophecy would determine what happens to you and your seed. The Most High inform you of what is to come to better prepare you. Do not let the warnings make you stagnant. The Most High is not giving you this information for you to do nothing. You have a role to play in your deliverance. As the prophecies unfold, prepare yourself and your family. Do not be like the foolish virgins who took the lamp without oil. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Do not be foolish about your life. You must make the decision. No one else is going to prepare you and make decisions for you.
You must get up and prepare yourself and family. The workers of iniquity believe they are wise. They are only fulfilling what the Most High prophesied from the beginning. The workers of iniquity believe they are in control. They are not. They are puppets on a string. Remember, the scripture said, In the house of the Most High, there are vessels made for honor and some for dishonor. Hath not the potter power over the clay, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor? For the scripture is to be fulfilled, the vessels of dishonor must fulfill their destiny. The people whose names that are not written in the book of life have a calling and a purpose. Their purpose is to fulfill the work of the wicked. The righteous are not going to do the work of the wicked. The workers of iniquity are doing what they are predestined to do. Remember, the remnant are called by the Most High. If the Most High did not predestine you to his kingdom, you will not inherit the coming kingdom, regardless if you are an Israelite or a stranger. It is time to stop believing religion. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Israelites, do not allow the kingdom of darkness make you believe the Most High is dead and cannot save his people. How many times have you read in the authorized scriptures of the Most High saving his people? Too many times to count. Right now, we are living in critical times. Israelites, once your back is against the wall and under pressure, that is when the truth comes out. The Most High will show you what is truly in your heart. Presently, many Israelites believe they are serving the Most High. They are not afraid to say they are serving Yah with their lips. But what does their heart say? This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Peter is a well-known disciple in the authorized version of the scriptures. Peter is very bold and outspoken. He was not afraid to speak. Like many Israelites of today, many are not afraid to speak. Many Israelites are warriors behind a keyboard and social media. However, outside of social media, many submit to the will of the kingdom of darkness through the beast system. The Most High is exposing the hearts of his people to encourage his people to understand the times we are living in. Israelites, it is important to choose the Most High regardless of what the kingdom of darkness does via the beast system. Peter said to Yahshua, I will fight with you even if it means death. Peter said he would never deny Yahshua. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples, when Peter's back was against the wall and under pressure, he buckled and submit to the will of the kingdom of darkness. The workers of iniquity who came to accuse Peter of his affiliation with Yahshua, instead of standing firm, Peter denied the Most High, not once, but three times. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately... The cock crew. When the Most High tests you to reveal to you what's in your heart, do not buckle under pressure. Rise above the intimidations and stand firm in the Most High. Right now, everyone can operate with minor restrictions on their lives. Many have access to food, water, and shelter. What will you do when the kingdom of darkness turn up the heat and deny you access to food, water, and shelter? What would your reaction be? Peter was an anointed disciple for the Most High. He still buckled under pressure. Yah humbled him by revealing to Peter what was in his heart. The Most High command this generation and future generations to humble themselves. Do not give the spirit of pride the opportunity to place a stronghold on your life. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The Most High will test us to show us what's in our heart. No Israelite is exempt regardless if you are called. We all must make the decision to endure until the end. I have had the kingdom of darkness send wealthy heathens to offer me money for this channel. 
The kingdom of darkness has sent many heathens to influence me to change the direction of this channel. Every time the kingdom of darkness come knocking, I had to make the decision with every temptation to serve the most high. We all must make the decision to serve Yah every day. Being misled by the kingdom of darkness has happened to all of us. The Most High is giving His people the opportunity to choose Him despite of what the beast system is doing. The scriptures reveal Satan asked the Most High permission to sift Peter like wheat. When Satan comes to sift you, in the words of Yahshua, I pray that your faith does not fail, especially at such a time like this. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Israelites, we all will face persecution from the kingdom of darkness. The most high need for his people to trust him and stand firm. I have shared with you of the many attempts Satan tried to get me to stop what I was called to do. When my own people came against me and caused me to lose my job several years ago, I had to trust the Most High to provide and the Most High provide. I did not have to compromise myself to survive. The Most High made sure I had everything that I need. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Yah will fight for us and provide. The Most High has given us his spirit, his words, and his army. Yah is hoping that your faith does not fail. As long as you have the Father, you will succeed. When you succeed, make sure to help your brethren. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Israelites, you must have enough faith in the Most High to overcome injustice, discrimination, and all the wicked plans of the kingdom of darkness. If you do not see the hands of the Most High operating in your life, this does not conclude the Most High has abandoned you. Israelites, even in the mix of your circumstances, you must continue to have faith and have a heart like Queen Esther. When the time came for Queen Esther to step up, she did, regardless of the consequences. Queen Esther was willing to put her life on the line. Queen Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Queen Esther could have saved herself. She could have let her people fight for themselves. Instead, Queen Esther had to believe that the Most High could save her and her people. The kingdom of darkness was waging war with the Israelites using Haman as the puppet to carry out their plans. The Persian king Azuharis reigned during this time, and he appointed Haman as his right-hand man. After these things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him? Because Mordecai did not bow down to Haman, Haman had a deep hatred for Mordecai and the Israelites. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Hasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Mordecai had to decide to continue to follow the statutes of the Most High or bow down to the commands of men. The decision he made caused the kingdom of darkness to persecute him and his people severely. Israelites, do not let the backlash you receive for serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth force you to comply to the orders of men versus the commands of the Most High. Mordecai chose to serve the Most High. Because of his decision to remain loyal to the Most High, the kingdom of darkness waged war against the entire nation of Israelites. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, 
and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. In the mix of the Israelites' persecution during Queen Esther and Mordecai's generation, the Most High made plans beforehand on how he would save his people. Yah made sure Esther obtained favor in the eyes of the king. A daughter of Zion who was an orphan, Yah chose her to become queen. Yah utilized Esther and Mordecai to save his people. The Most High returned to Haman and his entire household the evil he intended for Mordecai and the Israelites. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Then said Esther, If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree, and that Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it so to be done. And the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. Israelites, it may seem as if the Most High is not doing anything to help his people in this generation. That is not the case. The Most High always has a way out for his people. In every generation, the Israelites face major persecutions. Nothing that has happened under the sun is a surprise to the Most High. The same way the Most High foretold the end from the beginning, the Most High made plans to deliver the remnant of his people. The Most High has a way of making the enemy destroy themselves with their own wicked plans and solutions. But the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. Now that you are aware of the favor we have and the great power that is on our side, do not allow the kingdom of darkness intimidate nor deceive you into accepting their abominations. We are living in a time where the kingdom of darkness is waging war with all who do not comply. The workers of iniquity restrict our lives with a false pandemic. A global vaccination is what the kingdom of darkness strive to achieve. The kingdom of darkness through the beast system is doing everything in its power to get many to comply with their abominations. You must make the decision not to follow. Satan will always persecute the righteous. The scriptures say he accused us day and night to the Most High. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Israelites, many of you have taken a stand against the kingdom of darkness when you stop believing religion and establish a personal relationship with the Most High. When you decided to stop eating unclean food, that is taking a stand. Losing a job and trusting the Most High to provide without compromising yourself is taking a stand. Observing the set-apart day, the Sabbath, is taking a stand. Not participating in the pagan holidays is taking a stand. As we draw closer to redemption, life and death situations would increase. We all must take a stand against the kingdom of darkness. We can do it. You must put the Most High first and allow Yah to order your steps to overcome every adversary. Israelites, every day Satan is chipping away at our freedom, free will, and the laws of the Most High. You can sit around and watch the kingdom of darkness steal from you, or you can trust the Most High and take a stand. Peter fumbled a few times. However, he served the Most High even unto death. You cannot afford to remain silent at this time. Spiritual warfare is a must. Preparation is a must. Being vigilant is a must. Who knows if the Most High called you to his kingdom for such a time as this. Every Israelite, must do his or her part by engaging in spiritual warfare. We need the help of the Most High. Israelites, cry out to the Elohim of Israel. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this?